Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Throughout the month of June, my dear faithful, I have spoken each week about three of the twelve promises made by the Sacred Heart of Jesus to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. On this, the final Sunday of June, I shall speak of the final three of these promises, the spirit of which we see in today's gospel of the miraculous draft of fishes. Working at their own initiative and for their own profit, the apostles had labored all night long and accomplished nothing. Laboring at the command of our blessed Lord and out of love for him, they are overwhelmed with blessings, which the Prince of the Apostles declares himself to be unworthy of receiving. Depart from me, he exclaims, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. To him and to those also who are devoted to the Sacred Heart, our Divine Redeemer responds, Fear not. The tenth promise of the Sacred Heart to those devoted to him is, I will give to priests the power of touching the hardest hearts. You might think, perhaps, that this promise does not apply to you, since you are not priests. However, it is of paramount importance in today's world, where sadly there are so many and so grievous sins, both committed and even praised by society. In last Sunday's sermon, we saw that the Sacred Heart promises to sinners a boundless ocean of mercy should they be devoted to him. This tenth promise of the Sacred Heart offers to the priests who must guide the unfortunate sinners back to God the ability to reach even the most wretched hearts, blackened though they might be, by the most heinous crimes, obstinate in the most wicked enmity towards God. To such priests as are devoted to the Sacred Heart, our blessed Lord promises the ability to move, even as it were a heart of stone, to contrition and repentance. Pray for priests. Pray that should ever you have the misfortune of becoming hardened in sin, that you might have a priest to lead you back to God. Pray that priests might always keep aflame in their own hearts a lively devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, so that they might indeed be fishers of men who, because they labor with Christ out of love for his sacred heart, bring in, as the apostles did in today's gospel, such a great multitude of fishes that they must call out to their fellow laborers for assistance in securing the catch, lest it should be lost. The eleventh promise of the Sacred Heart to those devoted to him is that those who propagate this devotion shall have their names written in my heart, never to be blotted out. To have one's name inscribed in the Sacred Heart is to place it forever in the sight of God, to have the assurance of God's remembrance and love, not only for time, but for all eternity. God promises to love those who propagate devotion to the Sacred Heart forever. And loving them, he will lead them to himself. 
Here too, many might think that this is a promise for priests only, but nothing could be further from the truth. Let us never forget that the first apostle, if you will, of devotion to the Sacred Heart was a cloistered nun who never left the walls of her convent. Priests indeed might, and even should, propagate this great devotion, but you might do so yourselves also. Fathers and mothers particularly, as well as teachers, have the opportunity to enkindle within the hearts of their children a tender devotion for the divine heart that has first loved them with such infinite charity. I have already, in a previous sermon, mentioned the praiseworthy practice of enthroning the image of the sacred heart in the home. This practice of devotion provides father and mother the opportunity not only of propagating this devotion to their own family, but also to all those who cross their threshold, an opportunity which the children likewise might take advantage of as well. It is particularly in the family home that vocations to the holy priesthood are fostered and those parents who have instilled a great love for the Sacred Heart in the hearts of their children become the instruments of God in enabling future priests to touch the hearts of sinners and to enable countless souls to avail themselves also of the final promise made by the Sacred Heart. The twelfth and perhaps most famous promise of the Sacred Heart to those devoted to him requires a particular practice of devotion for its fulfillment. The Sacred Heart declares, I promise thee in the excessive mercy of my heart that my all-powerful love will grant to all who communicate on the first Friday of the month, for nine consecutive months, the grace of final penitence. They shall not die in my displeasure, nor without the sacraments. My divine heart shall be their safe refuge in this last moment. What is promised by this? In short, eternal salvation itself. To not die in the displeasure of God is to not die in the state of mortal sin, the one thing which would condemn us to hell. Even further, the Sacred Heart promises us the sacraments by means of which we might drastically mitigate or even entirely avoid the punishment of purgatory, which our sins have deserved. Having loved his own, he loved them unto the end. The hour of death is the most difficult struggle in our entire lives. Those who throughout life have sought to console their Redeemer in his agony by devotion and reparation to the Sacred Heart, shall in turn have him to assist and console them in their last agony. What is required of us that we might obtain so priceless a benefit? We are asked to communicate to receive the Holy Eucharist on the first Friday of the month for nine consecutive months. While this might require significant effort, it is an opportunity 
we should always strive to take advantage of whenever it might present itself. To fulfill the condition, we must, of course, receive the Holy Eucharist worthily. For a sacrilegious communion would be an offense against God rather than an act of devotion. We should also, when making the nine first Fridays, undertake this practice of devotion in a spirit of reparation. And we should at least form the intention on the first occasion of consciously making nine consecutive first Fridays. To go to confession along with receiving Holy Communion is not strictly enjoined unless, of course, we should be in a state of sin. But it is most profitable to us to always take advantage of the opportunity to purge from our hearts anything which would cause sorrow to our beloved Redeemer. He will be truly consoled by our presence rather than perhaps offended by our coldness and indifference our attachment, even to venial sin. As we draw to the close of this month of June, the month dedicated to the Sacred Heart, let us resolve to continue far beyond the end of June in our practices of devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, making reparation for our own sin and for the sins of others. There is no surer and more speedy way of growing into sainthood. And thus we should take advantage of it that we might spend all eternity with the Sacred Heart who has so loved us first. Sacred Heart of Jesus, delight of all the saints, have mercy on us. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.